Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A pleasure to have you here with us in beautiful Venice. Um, if you could begin with a brief introduction to this incredible film, The Penitent, how can, what can people expect when they watch it? Well, uh, my name is Luca Barbareschi. Thank you for inviting me. The movie is the most important movie of my life because uh, there's a little difference between my life, real life, and what's happening in the movie. Uh, David wrote a fantastic script. David Mamet has been an old friend. I, I think I produced and translated most of his work for Italy. And it gave me a chance through a, a real story because the Tatters of Case is something really happened to a psychoanalyst in, um, in California to tell a story that confront the character with all the worst thing of the world. Political correctness, cancel culture, woke culture, what, how a private life can destroy it, but the circus, circus of media and, and, uh, and justice. And so it was a big, big chance to tell all this thing through a fantastic story. And I'm uh, very happy I did it. And like you say, it's kind of, there's such deep roots to this story based on a true story, then going through it being a, a theatre production and then becoming uh, something cinematic. Um, what was that, did that process look like? And, and what might be some of the differences, but also the opportunities thrown up by putting something on the big screen? This happened to me already 30 years ago when we did with David Oleanna. Oleanna was a play, a fantastic play, and then we did a movie. Uh, the, this case is different because I act in both of them. So when I did it in the theater uh, three years ago, two years and a half, I did a character more nervous, more aggressive. I was more mad about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the play was a huge success. It was not a huge success in America. So we discussed a lot with David, said, why when Mamet is done in Italy is such a big deal? And, uh, and I have a lot of polemics in, in, uh, in for example, in, in other countries. Well, I think The Penitent, when I did it in the movie, two years later, I became more wise and maybe more relaxed about the fact that I'm not going to change the world. I'm not going to, there's not much I can do. And I put in the character a sadness that I think the character needed. So it becomes more empathic and, and, and the audience understand even better what's going on because it's about being Jewish, it's about, it's about le chonera, you know, bad mouth thing, it's about a lot of things that we all suffer. And I, and I, I could do everything in this movie and put a lot of emotion that belongs to me. Even the disaster of my private life with my wife, that living a life the way the character I had, I, you know who would have been perfect for the movie? But Kevin Spacey. I, th I wanted Kevin Spacey for this movie, mm. but no investors and no actors would work. Maybe now, yes, he's absorbed by everything. Would have loved to have Kevin Spacey. Mm. And, uh, and then when I did it, I thought about Kevin a lot, for example. Mm. You know, how can your life be destroyed by, by something that didn't happen? Or, so this movie for me is a piece of my life, mm. and I hope people enjoy it. And talking of your, your cast, um, it's wonderful that you know, found people who are also you know, passionate and, and very much from the theatre world, like Catherine Cormack and, and Adrian Lester. So how did you choose who you were going to work alongside? And, and how did that feed in perhaps to the, the look and feel of the film, which is also you know, these extended kind of dialogue pieces, which you might more readily associate kind of with what we see in the theatre than normally in cinema? Well, I, I choose the character, I choose the actors, as I thought they were best for the part. Kath McCormack is a fantastic, talented actress, and I'm really happy she accepted to do it. Uh, we work together, as we do, you know, when, when you do a movie, you rehearse a lot. And as a director, you, you try to steal something from what she really is. We had some discussion. I think she was... Uh, sometimes not happy, but I forced her not to be happy with me because I needed her to be mad at me. And when she was really mad, she was really good. <laughs> so that's the trick directors sometimes play. For example, with Adrian Lester, it was fantastic because I, I asked him to play God because I thought this judge 
I said, who is this judge? Because that's a specific, there's no specific indication in the play or in the movie. I said, let's say he's God. And suddenly, Carlos Hirsch meets God. And God asks you about religion. And this came very interesting. This scene is, is a fantastic scene. And he's a huge actor, fantastic. And everybody else, you know, all the characters in the movie were good, from the young kid, from the guy who plays the lawyer, from, uh, well, not the last scene with the two kids, because I used my own kids, because I needed two beautiful face and nice, because I think at the end, if there is a message, I don't know about messages, but is that we have to start from the beginning. We have to start from education. We have to start from a theater, from a very simple place in which two people talk and learn. We have to create a monument to teachers. I know in England you had a lot of problems with teachers in the past, but those are heroes. If we don't start from education from the beginning, we'll have monkeys in the future. So that's what I think. And in terms of what maybe some of the highlights were of the shoot, and then on the other side, some of the challenges, I mean, even in and of itself, both directing and, and acting must pose some, some challenges, but how do acting you... Acting and directing together, yeah. for example. Well, I did this most of my life in the theater. Maybe I have a bipolar, you know, attitude. It's very easy for me to direct myself, easier than being directed by somebody else. I, I know, I always, know where is the camera in my head. And uh, in a way, I think it's most difficult for the actors because they have the director watching them and the actor acting. And inside, I know when I'm looking as an actor or as a director, for them sometimes it's more confusing because they feel judged, so they don't respond. But through the years I learned that when I, I set the scene, then I forget about the directing, you know, the scene is done, and then I, let myself go emotionally in what I do. Yeah. And it's a fantastic game, you know, mm. giving and getting from, from, from the partner. Yeah. And of course, it deals with lots of knotty but very relevant issues to our current time, um, the role of the media, um, the, how our, our just justice system is currently. Um, why did you particularly want to maybe tackle some of those issues? And what did you want to sort of throw up um, that you think could be quite problematic about where we are right it's now. A very, it's a very simple chain that is all wrong. If we stop, if, I mean, this, how the world works, I have an action. You watch my action, you're a reporter, you can report. If I stole money, you report to the police. If I stole the money, a judge put me in jail. It doesn't work like that. Now, the judge wants an article on me doesn't matter if I stole or not, because he needs publicity from the press. Mm -hmm. The press make an article on me saying that I stole money. Doesn't matter if it's true or not, doesn't care. It's good for the papers, because so they sell. It's good for the judge, so he gets reelected, for example, in America, because he can use me for publicity. And then it's a sort of endless game of stupidity in which everybody loses. I lose as a human being because my life is destroyed by the media. The, me the media lose the dignity of being a real media because instead of informing, it's doing le general. It's, it's only bad-mouthing. The judge lose the power of being a judge because it's not behaving. He wants me to betray my, my Hippocratic oath because he needs it. So it's all wrong. And, and this is what's happening now today between media, the circus of media, justice, and the end of private life of people. We went from a culture of forgiveness, that is our Christian tradition, to a culture of shame, that is Japanese. Culture of shame is a character assassination. Doesn't matter if you're good or bad. I decide I'm gonna kill you. Defend yourself. <laughs> and you know, what do you hope people will think when they when they leave the cinema? Will they? It, it's offering questions rather than answers, and this idea of doubt. You know, 
I, I'm not preaching in this movie. Yeah. I always think it's a very old your, uh, hermeneutical, your, how do you say, hermeneutica? Hermeneutical uh, trick. To a good question, always answer with another question to avoid that the stupidity of my answer will insult the sharpness of your vision, of your brain, of your personality. So I believe and it's wonderful to, if you follow this logic, there is a lot of respect. I listen to your thoughts. You're, you're not an enemy. You're just somewhat, somebody that thinks differently. But that's not what I, what's happening with the cancel culture. Yeah. If you don't think like that, you have to, be, you have to die. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I'm too Jewish. I'm too free. <laughs> and what does it mean to you to have the film here at Venice Film Festival? A lot. At my, in this moment, you know, I have two movies at the film festival as a star. What can I ask for, you know? It's good. I won the film festival a long time ago with Summertime, almost 50 years ago, with a very controversial movie, the story of me falling in love with a woman ending up with a transsexual in New York. It was another movie I shot in New York. I won with Romance with Walter Chiari, again with Jacques, and now two movies. Yeah. I direct the National Theatre that I own, that I bought. I have a company of 80 people, Italians, and I'm proud to be Italians because we are good. And, uh, so I can touch with the finger of the sky. I'm very, I'm a privileged person. And do you, would you say, could you argue that actually the arts, in particular cinema, is one of the places where perhaps we do still have pretty good freedom of speech and it is an idea, a place for ideas to flow Italy. freely? Italy is a place of freedom of speech, totally. We don't give a fuck about political correctness. We don't give a fuck about woke culture and cancel culture. We say, when people discover the beauty of women, We've been faggot for 2,000 years so during Caesar times. In fact, Caesar used to go to war with a transsexual, with a mistress, with a young boy. Nobody gave, you know, we are too old to be so stupid. And so, viva l'Italia, that is a free country from stupidity. Fantastic. Well, that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much for sharing all that with me and really enjoy presenting your film here. Thank in you. Venice. Thanks Thank a lot. you very much.